The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Ustraos here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Sean McKnight, who is with BASF. How's it going today? Pretty good. Thanks for asking. So we're, we're at the time of the year. We're starting to uh, go out, scout our fields, and you're looking for uh, early weed control. Not, not in the pre-burn sense, but in the actual in-field uh, weed control. Do you want to tell me what you're telling producers? Yeah, I think it's really important to, um, well, you mentioned a good pre-burn. That's obviously really important when we're talking about in-crop weed control. But um, after that's happened, I think it's really important to go out and scout fields. So we really want to know um, what's there, um, you know, how heavy is your weed pressure. And so that helps us kind of make our decisions, um, you know, whether it be rates or products or whatever we want to use in crop. So it's really important just to get out and take a look. Now, in your position, do you cover all of Western Canada or where's kind of your target area? Um, I'm a tech marketing person for herbicide. So I guess Western Canada would be my, my focus. Um, so I support kind of our, our regional tech service people in the field. Yeah. So what are some of the main, I guess, problem weeds then that you're going to be focused on or, or your tech services specialists are going to be focused on? Yeah, it's interesting. That's a little bit of a um, regional question, but I think there's always the common culprits that come up. So kochia is, a, you know, obviously one that we talk about a lot when it comes to pulse crops. And, you know, if you're a canola grower more in a black soil zone and that, cleavers are obviously another common culprit of, of things that we talk about as well. And, and wild oats obviously is always a concern, especially when it comes to resistance issues and stuff like that. And, and uh, on the note of resistance why why is it important that we're obviously rotating um doing things like that when it comes to weed resistance yeah um you know rotating your your um mode of actions are important um i think also important is is kind of you know what you'd consider a, a herbicide layering program so it's really important to to discuss um you know with an agronomist or, or even when you're making your, your herbicide plants just to, to really plan out probably years in advance in terms of what your herbicide program is. So we want to make sure we're rotating modes of action, layering multiple modes of action, because um, we want to really try and limit those selection events or selection pressures on those herbicides. So mixing in multiple mode of action herbicides, um, you know, in, in, in each application when we can is important because we just want to continue to limit those selection events on those herbicide groups. So when you're talking layering, are you talking making multiple, um, using multiple modes of action at once? Or are you talking about making multiple passes through the field? <clears throat> yeah, it can be a bit of both. So, um, you know, so if we're, we're talking about um, layering, you know, you're generally talking about kind of layering in a pre-seed application followed by, by an in-crop application and, and perhaps even a post-harvest. But um, but yeah, we, we want to talk about it kind of in a holistic sense and, and even year-over-year application. So so yeah, we want to have multiple modes of action when possible and also layering in probably multiple apps where we can with multiple modes of action. And, and you talked about, you know, going and paying attention to maybe having a program for the next couple of years. Talk about field history, how that plays into uh, weed scouting as well. Yeah, it can be important because, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to go on a tangent here too, but when it comes to resistance, that can be important. So, you know, if we're tracking our field history, we can start to tell a bit of a story, whether we have a resistance issue coming up. So there's a particular weed problem we have or a particular weed that that's continues to seem to escape maybe we have that issue but I think it also is really important when we talk about um, you know just follow cropping as well so you know we want to make sure that the, the crops we're planning to, to plant in the upcoming season are are listed as as um, you know recropping options on those specific herbicides and that type of thing too so it's really important to have a plan and that can help us kind of develop our, our, our you know cropping intentions as the years go on too. And I mean, I know it sounds pretty intuitive, but talk about the importance of actually tackling these weeds right off the bat, um, getting rid of them before they're taking over your crop. Yeah, that's really important um, because, you know, the smaller weeds are generally almost all the time, I would say in every scenario, the smaller the weed, the easier it should be to control. So especially when it comes to herbicide layering, that's why, you know, that particular, you know, system works really well in your integrated, um, you know, herbicide management strategy is that, you know, we get a, a really nice pre-seed burn off, we get small weeds, 
Um, where we can use residual products, we will. And so that keeps the weeds um, kind of in check and smaller for our in-crop application. And so, um, you know, we think, for instance, pulse crops, we have to use lots of the uh, group two chemistries and they tend to work better um, on smaller weeds. So that's why it's important to, to kind of continue to have a handle on those. So when we get large weeds in crop, we're really pushing the limits of herbicides. And, and you know, that's when we can get in, get in trouble for sure when it comes to, to maximizing the efficacy there. Great. And any other messages you'd like to send to producer when it comes to early weed scouting or, or efficacy? Yeah, I think um, everybody is short on time. And I know that's uh, that's definitely an issue, especially in the springtime. But where we can, I think it's just so important to get out and, and just quickly scout our fields and, and maybe get out of the common areas, right? We'll pull the truck into the into the approach and look around real quick and then and then get out of there. So I think it's important to kind of walk around see what kind of issues we have, um, especially when it comes to resistance. We want to make sure we're managing the herbicides that we have because, um, you know, when it comes to new groups, you know, they're becoming fewer and farther between, right? So we have to kind of maximize or lengthen the amount of time we have with our current herbicide portfolio. So, you know, if we're starting to see resistance issues pop up, um, we'll see them sooner if we're actually scouting our fields um, on a regular basis. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much for your time. 